what is up guys, welcome back to Predator Exotics. Now, today we're going to be bringing you another care guide and it's going to be for the dwarf sand geckos, also known as Stendaculus denodactylus. Let's get it. So we're talking about the Stenodactylus and Stenodactylus today. The reason we use the Latin name is because they're referred to as a lot of different names. Dwarf sand geckos, jeweled sand geckos, elegant geckos, uh, I think Lichtenstein's short-fingered gecko after the person that founded them. And they've got a variety of different names. Uh, so they reach about three inches in size. The females are going to be slightly bigger than the males. And you can tell this by the hemipenal bulge as well, but we'll get onto that in our sexing and breeding section of the video. So these guys are found throughout Northern Africa and into the Middle East. So this species, the Stenodactylus stenodactylus, is found all throughout Northern Africa, from Morocco all the way to Egypt, all in the sandy sub-Saharan areas, um, slightly into the Middle East, into sort of Israel, where some of the other Stenodactylus species go further into the Middle East um, and share a lot of territories with this specific species. So let's talk about housing. now. This 45-45 cube can easily hold up to four geckos. We only house two in here and a 10 gallon tank would be fine. These are a terrestrial species, which means they stay on the ground and don't do much climbing. So this much height isn't actually required. That's why we've added a two tier layer for them to actually get around instead of needing to climb on the glass, such as a crested gecko or anything along those lines. Now, what a lot of people may say online, we do use a sand based substrate. This is because they are sand geckos. They do require sand to feel safe in their habitat. We've also added a few extra pieces inside, such as slate, especially in the hotspot. Now, this slate can actually trap in the heat and then radiate it outwards. This gives them a very warm hiding spot up in their hotspot. We've also got a humid hide in the bottom left corner here. Now, we've never actually witnessed them go in there. So this probably isn't necessary. We've just put it in there as a extra added bonus. And as you can see, throughout the whole enclosure, we've given them lots of hiding spaces underneath slate in small caves that we built. It gives them a nice secure feeling and allows them to feel safe whilst they're in their environment. So these guys are from North Africa, so they like it hot. So you're going to want your hotspot anywhere from 28 to 33 degrees Celsius. We keep ours at 31 and it is controlled with a Habistat digital dimming thermostat with the probe just coming out of the hotspot there. So in terms of lighting, not everyone knows what to do with this species. Uh, I've seen a lot of people use a 2% bulb, anywhere up to a 12% bulb, because they are from North Africa, but they're a nocturnal species. So they won't be out during the day absorbing as much UVB as they would during the night. So we've chosen to use a 10% UVB bulb, and through the mesh you lose about 30% of your UVB output. So it comes out at about 7% UVB, which is in between the ranges of what we've researched online. So again, a North African species, so you don't want it humid. You want it very dry, you want to keep the sand dry. I do provide a small water bowl, um, just in case they do want to go in there and soak. Um, and I mist it once a week. Um, just a light spraying in the evening, 
to replicate a sea mist or a little bit of raised humidity only for a few hours but it's better than not having any at all. Now let's move on to feeding. Now we feed these guys every other day. We feed these guys second in star crickets. We feed them towards the night because they are a nocturnal species. Each one will eat about four to seven crickets each time we feed them. Now of course every time we feed them we do dust it in a calcium and mineral powder. These guys can also look into eating small hoppers or micro mealworms. Now we haven't actually tried this before, we'd be interested to see how they handle it. Now these guys will only eat insects, they won't be interested in any fruit or veg, so there's no bother trying to put that inside the enclosure. Now in terms of water, these guys do have a small water bowl in there, but they rarely use it. They get all of their water from inside the crickets. Occasionally when we do spray down the enclosure and it gets on their face, we have witnessed them licking it off. Also another way in case they're not getting enough water. So let's talk about the behaviour of these dwarf sand geckos. They are a nocturnal species, so you can see we're recording during the day, and they'll be hiding all about the enclosure, and they will come out at night, and this is when they are most active. They are diggers, so that's why we've used the excavator clay at the back, to see if they'll dig, utilise all the caves and all the different crevices, and especially breeding females will dig throughout this substrate looking for somewhere to lay their eggs, and you'll find small craters, you can see they've dug under this cave just here, try and find somewhere to lay their eggs. So in terms of handling, this isn't a handleable species. They're very small, they're very quick, and they have very thin skin, which you could easily rip with poor handling. The only thing to say, they will tame down with time. So we're working on taming these down. We've got the female um, and a male. The male's a little bit more skittish, because he is smaller, but the female will come out, she's quite bold in terms of eating and we'll put in some clips of feeding her straight from the bag with the crickets and she'll even take them off your finger if she feels like it. So, let's talk about sexing your geckos. The first most obvious sign with your geckos is that the female is slightly larger than the male. If you need a bit more convincing on which one is a male and which one is a female, you can look towards the base of their tail. Now the male will have a small hemipenal bulge, whereas the female will not. This will be your main giveaway of whether it's a female or a male. So you can keep your dwarf sand geckos in colonies with more than one male, which is unusual for some species. So you can keep a group of maybe two males and three females quite comfortably and it'd be a good sized breeding group. Um, your males will start calling and we'll put in a little clip of their chirping now. And this will entice the females to breed and it will also increase the courtship of the other males inside your tank. The females will get gravid and lay their eggs two to four weeks after courtship and you will see a clear ovulation and a clear gravid gecko. We'll put in a picture of one that was gravid the day before she laid and you can clearly see those eggs in that lower abdomen. So they lay two eggs at a time. So as you can see we have four. So the two here were laid on the 1st of May and you can see they're slightly pink. This is because you can see the veins and the embryo developing inside the egg. And then we also have two more that were laid on the 28th of May and they're coming along nicely but they haven't changed that pinkish colour yet. So this is our makeshift incubator because it's the first reptile that we've been breeding. So our setup here is simply a Tupperware box with a heat mat underneath and you want to keep the eggs dry but in a humid environment. So we've got our moist vermiculite inside the enclosure making it humid but the eggs themselves are on dry sand because this is what they would be in the wild. So you want to incubate these anywhere from around 82 to 90 degrees and it's going to take anywhere from 54 to 80 days to hatch. We don't know exactly so stay tuned and hopefully you'll find out if these hatch and we get some baby little geckos. So in conclusion is this the right pet for you? Now if you're looking for a nice nocturnal species and kind of a display pet then definitely we do recommend it. These guys are going to cost you about £30 each, and if you're going for more of an elaborate setup like us, it costs around £200. Now if that's in your budget, then we would highly recommend the Dwarf Sand Gecko. Now these guys can be quite fascinating to watch, especially because not many people actually have them. They're not available in every kind of pet store along the lines of a leopard gecko or a crested gecko, so it gives you a bit more of a unique edge on your gecko. So we're going to rank these at a beginner to intermediate level for any new keepers in geckos. Now, these guys will make a great addition to any exotic collection, and that's why we're recommending them to you today. So make sure you stay tuned to our channel, because we will be getting a few more to increase our breeding group, and also stay tuned to see if our eggs hatch and all our babies hatching out, which will be really great to watch. So we hope you enjoyed our Stenodactylus Stenodactylus care guide. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe to Predatory Exotics. We'll see you next Friday. Bye guys.
Let's hang up. Next up is feeding. Sorry, I brushed your leg and it threw me off. <laughs> 